Hello internet people, my name is Robert and in this new mailing light tutorial for beginners you're going to learn step by step how to get started with mailer light email marketing software. By end of this video you will know how to sign up and get your account approved by mailer light, set up landing pages by using templates, create email pop-ups and forms to use on your own website, create text emails, make useful automation flows and send campaign emails. And the best part is that MailerLite has a free plan if you have less than a thousand subscribers, so it's perfect to start with. Also, you can find the timestamps for each section in this tutorial in the description of this video. The first step is to scroll down to the description of this video and click on the first link. And you'll land on MailerLite's homepage and here you can just start with your account by signing up for free you're going to get the 30 day premium features trial so you can test out the features if you like them you can then upgrade and if you don't then you don't need to use them you don't need to enter your credit card at this stage then fill up the details so if you don't have a company name don't worry you can just use your name or you can invent something so in my case i'm going to use my youtube channel name and then for the name i'm just going to add my email address at newsletter at solid.com and then the password and then just click on create my account. Now you need to verify your email address. And you should get an email like this from Mailer Lite. And just click on the button verify email address. And you'll see that it will open up the same view again. And then you just need to complete your profile. And don't worry, if you don't have a website, it's no problem. You can also use your social media, for example, you have a following on instagram or youtube then you can also pay place that url here it's just for mail alert to confirm that you're a real person you're actually doing something and you're not gonna spam everybody with their with emails from mail lights uh, server so i'm gonna enter my youtube channel here and click on next steps and you need to enter your organization information in this case if you don't have a company you can also uh, just add your personal address i'm gonna enter the deal is here and then choose the industry just choose something that's closest to you and then click on next step and then they'll ask some questions here there's actually quite a lot of questions if you ask me but i'm gonna use campaigns forms uh, automations and transaction emails maybe later so i'm gonna select those features you can select the same ones doesn't really matter in this case then do you have any subscribers right now choose if you have or not uh yeah, we're gonna choose no for this tutorial just because we are new to this and uh just here type in so just describe it shortly what is your business about or how are you going to interact with the email list so i have a text like this just short and uh, to the point So if you've used other email marketing services, you can identify it here. I'm going to just say no. And then digital products, are you going to sell them uh, from the platform? We can say for now, no, you can always change that. This is just a, like a questionnaire. And then website builder, have you used other website builders? Again, you can answer whatever you, whatever makes sense here. Just going to say no, and then click on next step. And now you need to confirm the mailer lights anti-spam policy. So just read through it. if. And if you agree with it, you need to check this mark here. Then just click on confirm. And now we are in. And this is the dashboard. And on top, you can see congratulations. You can now access all MailerLite features. Email sending will be enabled once the team has reviewed your profile. So they actually review your details. And then based on that, they will uh, either accept you or reject. And usually this takes an hour or two. It's, the approval comes pretty quick. So just make sure you fill in all the details so that they don't reject you for no reason. So first of all, we need a way to collect emails from people. This is where a landing page is useful. If you have a website with traffic already, you can instead just install embedded forms or pop-ups from MailerLite directly on your site. I will cover forms and pop-ups at the end of this video, but building them is almost the same as creating landing pages. Speaking of landing pages, 
The only purpose of our landing page is to convince the person that they should leave their email address because you will send them something valuable. Most websites offer a lead magnet, so some sort of a free digital product like an ebook, checklist, or a short video course. It really can be anything that the person finds valuable. And in exchange, the person provides their email address to you. Now, creating the lead magnet is not part of this tutorial, but there's a lot you can do with the software called canva.com. I'll leave a link to a great tutorial about this in the description of this video. All right, let's start everything by creating a landing page. Uh, and that's under sites here on the left. And here you can see you have option landing pages and websites. You can actually build a, a small website on MailerLite. I don't really recommend it's not so they're not so good the templates but for landing pages it's perfectly fine so let's make sure we select the landing pages and then create then just give this landing page a name i'm just gonna call it get your free ebook just write something that you recognize this by and then make sure you have selected landing page and save and continue and since we're completely new we need to create a group I'll explain groups in a second. Let's just name this one Welcome Sequence Group like this. And then click on Create. All right, now we can choose this group, right? Continue. And here we can choose the template we're gonna use for this landing page. Now you can start from scratch or there's a lot of different templates here. And I actually like to use templates just because they have already some things styled and it's just nice a way to have a starting point as you can see this is just 12 there's uh, many more pages here still so if you like some of them you can choose them but actually i i think i like this one here so i'm gonna i can preview it here if i click on it all right so this is what you're gonna get so there's actually more than just the form itself that's all right we can delete stuff we can change things we can change images we can change text so for me this template looks good so let's select it now, this might take some time to load just because it's first time and MailerLite is still loading this stuff on your computer. It might take a minute or so even for some cases. And once it's done, you'll see that you have all these elements here. And let's start by actually deleting some of them because this, this is just way too much. I don't think we're going to need this. If you think you'll need it, just leave it. But for now, I'm going to delete this by clicking on this trash icon. And again, trash icon. I just need to delete everything here. Like this. I hover over it and then delete it. Okay, awesome. Now we have just this uh, form. And what you can do now is actually start typing. So if you want to uh, change this title, you can just type something there. So let me make it a bit more interesting. I'm going to fill in the title here. And then there's a subtext. Like this one here. So I already prepared something like this. So just click on the image on the pen icon here. And now on the right, you can see you can change this image here. So let's edit the image. And this is our file manager or like the media library, but we don't have anything because we just started. So let's upload an image there. And I'm going to upload a ebook cover here. So I want to kind of advertise what's what they are getting for for their email address. And you can see it replaced the image, but now it's kind of huge, right? So you can uh, just go to here at the bottom corner and drag it a little bit and make it smaller like this. So that's it's proportional like this. You could also here on the right add a link. In this case, it's actually not a link, but more of just a, a picture of what you're getting. So I'm not going to add anything there. And you could also make that link open in a new tab. But again, it just doesn't apply to us right now. So I'm going to keep it as this. Then click on save. And now I'm going to click into this field. And you can see that I could change this image to a video. And I can also change the position of the media. So in this case, the image would change to the right. But I actually like on the left. So I'll keep it at that. And then let's click on form. And here you can change the button here. So let's say if I don't like uh, the start trial, I think I would say something like get it now. Like that. And you can see it updates here live. 
Now, you need to choose what the button does. So, it, does it go to success page or it redirects to somewhere else? You could also redirect to your own website or to another page in MailerLite. But actually, in my case, success page is totally fine because in that case, we already got the email and we're going to continue the communication with email. So, right now, we have only one field, email, which for some people is enough. But actually, I would like to have uh, another field here. So, I want to have a name field. And then we can drag this up. So I want to have name above email. So if I drag it like this and release it, you can see they switched. That's great. And if you click on this edit icon, so this pen icon, you can actually edit uh, the field itself. So in this case, the label says name, but it's a bit unclear what name. I'm going to just type in first name. And in the field, you can actually change this field to last name, company, country, or any other ones here. And this is how MailerLite actually stores it in, in its database. So I'm keeping it as a name, basically in this case, first name. I want to make it this field required. And also I'm going to keep the field type as input. Then save changes. And let's take a look that the email field is actually, yeah, it's all good. You can't actually do much with it because it's the email. You could also say, okay, I want to actually the, see these labels above here, but it's not really necessary. I think this is uh, clear enough. You could add more fields here, but the less you ask, the better it is. Uh, so I, I would just ask for first name, maybe this last name and email, and that's it. Just don't, don't go crazy with this. And then here you have form settings. If you click on that, you have some other settings if you need. For example, you could add privacy policy. Uh, there's other recapture here. For example, if there's a lot of bot traffic on your website, you could add this there. Right now, I don't see a need. And I'm gonna save this. Okay, cool. One thing I wanted to, uh, so if you click into this again, you, you have also additional settings here, so you can adjust what what, what you see. So for example, um, the button now is on the left, uh, in the center, and actually, I don't want it. It's uh, They call it the call to action. So if I click on this one, you can change the color of the button, and you can also change where it where it is aligned. So let's say if I want to left align, then I click on this one. If I want right align, it'll go behind it, but it's right aligned. Or maybe you want to have a big button like this one here. Uh, let me show you what I mean. Like this one here. I like this one. I'm just going to make the font slightly bigger. Like this. And I'm okay with this otherwise. So you have additional settings here. So play around with them and see what fits your needs. Okay, great. And then click on save. So right now we are in a general page settings like here. And there's more th settings here. Like for example, you can change the font, uh, default fonts here. I actually like Poppins. I think it's a good font. And there's other things here if you need to add. And then if you click on blocks, this is where you can add new elements to the page. So for example, I don't know if you want to add a table or a survey all you have to do is drag it into place where you can see that those dotted lines that's where you can place it so let's say if i want it here underneath it adds it there so i'm going to delete it just because we don't need that right now okay so here at top you also see that you have landing page and then success page so landing page is something we're already building here and success page is when somebody actually leaves their email address uh, submits uh, the form and that's where they're gonna see so so thank you um in our case i'm gonna change this text to something like your ebook will be in your inbox within a few minutes so we're kind of letting them know that hey what you sign up for you're gonna get it in just a few minutes you can also adjust this uh style in terms of style more because now the background is not so pretty so if you would like to change it here you could change to something more interesting so we have a card here but uh, maybe you want to have something uh, different here. So we can change it to a picture or just have a, a, a normal background there without any picture. You see like this. Okay, white on white doesn't really work. So if I change it to like green, you'll notice it's much nicer now. And I can save it and save it. So this is our success page and landing page is ready. Right? I think the page looks pretty good right now. So I'm going to save it as a draft. Okay, great. So first we need to choose the landing page URL. I wouldn't keep it like this. I, I would make it a bit prettier. So for example, since this is about uh, ebook for YouTube world secrets, I'm going to actually just call it like that. 
maybe without the capital letter like this and you can see that the url is subscribepage.io which is uh, something that mail alive provides you for free if you upgrade you can actually change this to your own domain name which i think is a better uh, especially if you start growing i think it just looks more professional but starting out this is totally fine but i would consider changing it as soon as you get a bit of traffic a bit of newsletter signups uh, just to look a bit more professional and if you scroll down you can also adjust fav icon and fav icon is just basically this thingy that you can see here at the top this is the fav icon of mailer uh, and you could also upload your own all you need to do is have a small logo that is 16 or 32 pixels height and width and it just has to be uh, saved in PAG or I ICO file. So um, very simple. If you have something, you can upload it here. Then you have some settings. Now, to be honest, I wouldn't go too crazy with these because so on Google, you're not going to show up on Google uh, with this page. It's quite unlikely, especially if you don't have your own uh, domain name set up. But you could add like a page title here. So something like your company name or your name and then free YouTube growth secrets. Awesome. You can also add some description if you want to. Then you have also social share here. Here you could add a description and then obviously also a title. If they share this on Facebook or LinkedIn or somewhere, this will show up nicely. You can also upload an image there. So let's do that. I'll just upload the same image. Like that. Now they do say that you should use minimum of uh, this size image. So keep that in mind. And then I just wanted to show you that the visitors that come to this page, you can also track it in Google Analytics and with Facebook Pixel. You just need to add those IDs here and then you're able to see what happens on this page in your GA or Facebook Pixel uh, dashboard. So there's uh, some additional stuff here, but let's just save and continue. All right, awesome. Your page is almost done, but since we are not yet uh, approved by MailerLite, so we cannot publish it. So for now, what we can do is just keep it as is and publish it as soon as it's approved. Just remember, you just need to click on this button to publish and then you can copy this URL here. This is what your page URL is. If you copy it and you would go to this URL, once you publish it, it's going to show up. And this is the URL you will share with your customers, with your social media followers, anywhere where you think you can get some traffic on this page. Now that doesn't stop us from continuing because next we're going to set some settings so that your um, account looks more professional and some default things that you don't need to change every time you send an email. So let's just go to the account settings section. And here on the company profile, just make sure you can add some details here. So for example, address, uh, it looks like it's a wrong one here so I can adjust it. Uh, these things you can keep. Make sure your time zone is correct. Time format is what you like. And just keep in mind that for the free version, you will have a mailer like branding in each email. It's a small logo on at the bottom of the email. It's not too bad, but something to keep in mind. So if you are not happy with that, once you are ready to send out emails, you can just upgrade. So let's go to default settings. Just change the sender name to a bit more personal. So I'll just use my first name, like Robert. And the sender email is where you send out the emails from. Um, if possible, use your own email because that, again, looks a bit more personal. But in some cases, it's not possible. So maybe you use something like, in my case, it's tutorials at punchsaw.com or maybe a another generic email address like this one. But the more personal you can make it, the better it is. Then the rest you can keep as is. It's not that interesting. I think these are already quite nicely done. So let's save the changes. And then under domains, this is quite the important part. I want to just show you that we have verified our domain name in terms of like the email itself. Super important part of here is the authentication. And even if you hover over this question mark, you'll see that this improves the deliverability of your emails. And it just means that more emails go to the user's inbox and not the spam box. So super important to set up, but it's a bit technical. It's not hard, but it's a bit technical. So I'm going to leave this to the end of this video. So if you're interested in doing that right now, just check out the timestamps in the video description.
and then there's also link tracking and this is nothing special you can uh, uh adjust the utm tags that show up in your google analytics if you send it to your website but it just something to know about now we got that boring stuff out of the way let's go back to the dashboard next we will dive into email automation and this is probably the most useful part of using email marketing software like mailer Lite. so you don't have to do everything manually and instead you set it once and it will work for you forever so here on the left just click on automations create your first automation and this is exciting because we are going to create the welcome sequence not the group but we're going to cre create the sequence itself so let's do that and start building let's just uh, click on what is the trigger for this to start working so so under the workflow trigger in this uh, drop down just select the when subscribe joins a group then do things so then do the automation there's other options here if if uh, they click on certain uh, link in an email when the subscriber completes a specific form and there's many of those here but i'm gonna just act uh, choose this when subscriber joins a group and the group is in this case welcome sequence group that's basically what we created for our landing page and uh, I would check this one, repeat workflow for subscribers who rejoin the same group. So sometimes they might uh, by accident unsubscribe. So when they subscribe, they get the same flow again. That's fine. I'm going to save this. Okay. Now here we can see that we have a trigger. And once they join this group, welcome sequence group, if you click on this plus, we can add more things. So, okay. Once this happens, what, what will we do? And well, obviously we need to send the ebook to, to the people. And it's quite simple. We're just going to click on this email icon. And you see here, you have steps here. So I'm going to give this a name. This is again, name for yourself. So something like, here's your ebook. Same thing for subject line. Here's your ebook, but let's make it a bit interesting. Uh, if I click here on the, uh, at the beginning, I can actually insert the, uh, some personalization. In this case, we will know the first name of the person. So what does this mean? This represents a variable, which means the first name of that person. So it will be in my case robert here's your ebook in this case i don't need this one uh, i make it small so it's one sentence right so you will say robert here's your ebook who is it from it's from robert uh, just because yeah it's, it's coming from me and uh, the sender email tutorials at punchstyle.com that's fine and here i would check the utm tags there's no harm if you if you don't do if you do it it's just good to have uh, uh, some data there and let's save this and now if you click again on the email, we can actually design the email as well. So if you click on that, now we get into creating the email itself. So again, you have the possibility to start from scratch. You have some templates. Like you see here, there's quite many, there's 78 of them. So if you like something visual, you, I'm sure you'll find something here. But because it's our first email and we're just sending them a, uh, a ebook, I'm going to keep it super simple. And actually, there's some debate between should you send a very rich, uh, like very beautiful emails versus very standard emails. Um, there's some debate if uh, one is more spammy than the other. So, for example, the one that is styled is perceived a bit more spammy. I, I don't know, but I would start with rich text editor. Unless you have products that are very visual, that you want to showcase something, then you should go with that. Just make sure you don't overdo it for things that you don't need to like in my case i'm sending an ebook you don't need to make a beautiful image and have this whole experience just to send an, uh, the person a pdf file they just want to get the ebook they don't want to see all the rest stuff so i'm going to use the rich editor for this one this is how your email basically will look like this is the uh, bottom part of it and i don't think you can even change that this is the address and stuff like that. So if you don't look, like to see that, maybe change it a little bit. Uh, but keep in mind, there's certain rules that you need to oblige to. Uh, and here you can just start typing like any other email. So just, hi, I'm so happy that you're interested in the ebook. And then you can download it here. Some explanation, blah, blah, blah. Just add something to the email like this. Now, what we can also do is here. Hi, 
And then if you double click here, you can, when you see this panel, you can add this variable. So click on it again, you can add the name. And like this, it will say, Robert, I'm so happy you are interested in the YouTube growth ebook. You can download it here. How do we share the ebook with the person? Fortunately, you cannot just uh, upload that file into Mailer, Mailer Lite, but you can uh, easily use Dropbox or maybe uh, Google Drive. And that's what I'm going to use right now. So I have a, here a file for my ebook and I can share this with anybody. So if I right click on this one, I can get a link, All right? And here I need to make sure that it's not restricted, but uh, anyone with the link can actually access this. And then I can copy the link and done. If I go back to Mail Mailer Lite, I can paste it here. So let's actually make this text into hyperlink. So let's select this whole thing. It doesn't want to like this. And then you can make it into a link, insert link, URL. So that's why we just copied from Google Drive. And this is the text. And let's open the link in a new tab like this, insert. All right. So anytime now a person receives this email, they can just click on this link and it will take them to the Google Drive and they can just download it from there. So what if you wanted to add some other elements to this email, like an image or something? That's pretty simple. All you have to do is go to a new row and then click on this little plus icon. And now you can add new elements to it, like text, image, uh, button, video. This feature is really cool. I'll show you in a second. Let's just first use the image. Then click on this thumbnail. And now on the right, you can actually choose the image. If you browse, then you can go to your media library and choose the image. So for example, if I just use this one, you could also upload another image if you want to. And it becomes super big here. So I can, again, just drag here, make it smaller like this, and then maybe left align it. So it's nicely here with the text. Uh, and you can add the URL to it. So it becomes a link. And if you're not happy with it, you can always just hover over this. And when you see these three dots, you can delete this whole thingy. Now, next, I want to show you the video feature, which is, I think, really cool. So if you choose video, and now if you click on this uh, thumbnail, you can actually enter the video URL. So I already prepared a video from YouTube. But then if you click on it, this loads for a few seconds or maybe a minute even. And boom, as you can see, it made a GIF out of a few seconds in the video. And it, re it really looks cool because now it's something moving and something that the readers of this email uh, are drawn to. And obviously when you click on this, it will take you to the video itself. So you can also give some, uh, there's some settings you can set here. And if you don't like the animated image, you could also have just static image. You can link to a source. So in this case, my, this is the YouTube video, or you could have a custom link that goes somewhere else as well. Super cool feature. And I think I'm going to use a lot this feature, but for this email, I don't actually need it because I'm just sending the ebook. Otherwise this email is ready. And just so you know, you have some possibilities to, uh, for the settings here. For example, fonts, you could change it to something different than Arial. So like this, you can also change the headings and things like that, text size and anything you see here. But I'm going to just keep it as is. The only thing I want to mention is you have this pre-header. Let's say this is your email inbox. And you can see that this is the title and then here is the pre-header. So it's basically the text before the header. I don't know. That makes no sense. But by default, it will take the first text. But you can also change it to something custom and uh, write it down here. I'm not going to do that. Uh, I think it's fine to just have the first uh, first few words shown in the email box as well. All right. And oh, yeah, here is the e uh, mailer light logo that I mentioned before. So if you're using the free account, this is what you will see with all the emails. You cannot delete it unless you upgrade to the paid plan. And once you're happy with your email, you can just click on done editing. And that's our first step of, of our automation. So whenever somebody joins this uh, group, that's basically from the landing page or later on, you can also assign it to a another form or a pop up. And then once they sign up, they actually get this email immediately. 
Now we can also add a delay. So for example, after, I don't know, let's wait for two days. You could also choose other ones like two weeks or months. <laughs> That's a bit too long, but let's say after two days, save. We can send another email or we can actually look at the condition. So let's say a condition. A condition just means if something is tr uh, true or false, and then it, it will do things based on that. So on the right, I'm going to choose any rule. The condition is uh, workflow activity. We're going to select that here is your ebook, so basically this email. So when something happens in this email, we're going to uh, click on had a specific link click. And we're going to select the drive in this case. This is the uh, drive link. So if somebody clicked on this link, then you go into this flow. So if they clicked, it's a yes path. If they didn't, then it's a no path. So let's save that. So this condition is now live. And if they do not click on this specific link, then we are going to send an email, like a reminder email, something just like, hey, did you see the email? Or um, I'm just gonna give the name here, like, did you receive the YouTube growth book? Uh, and then I would obviously create an email for it, but just uh, I want to show you how this automation works. So I'm not going to create each e emails, but here I would just uh, kind of remind them, maybe resend the uh, link again and then save it. So now we have covered the uh, if, if they didn't click on the link, but if they did click on the link, now we can send them a, a second email. Let's say it can be some other tips, useful, um, useful information about YouTube, or anything like that and and then after the second email we wait again a couple of days let's say three days three day delay and after three days we send out another email which will have um, I don't know something useful to the customers again something tips uh, about camera usage or something like that it doesn't really matter as long as you're adding value and now after the third email, we are going to wait again a couple days like this. And this is where we're going to actually throw in our promotion. So I actually want to promote my video course on for YouTube. So I'm going to send an email about that. Uh, so it would be just an email about that. So uh, again, I'm keeping it simple for this tutorial, but I think you get the point here. So after providing value, I'm actually going to send an email with the promotion in it and actually trying to sell something to the people that they might actually find very useful. And once this sequence is done, this is my uh, like a welcome sequence. Uh, and the idea, the first email is you kind of get to know each other and you send something valuable every time. Uh, you can tell a bit about yourself as well in each email. Uh, and then you can uh, send an offer. Then what I want to do after all of this, I want to have an action. An action in this case just means that, and I actually want to move this person to another group. So I want to move them from that welcome sequence group. Sorry, from the welcome sequence group to, we need to create a new group here. And it's going to be called newsletter group. This is basically your, and this is going to be your main email list. And once a user is part of this, they're going to just receive an email every now and then, whatever is your uh, frequency, let's say once a week, they're going to receive an email that is uh, actually sent out to everybody. So I'm going to save this. I have now new new group. So basically when they went through all this flow, they're going to get moved from this group welcome sequence group to newsletter group. But what I want to also do is I'm going to add another action. Let's say I want to update a custom field. And in this case, it means I actually want to create a new custom field. And this custom field is just uh, very simple. The field name will be something like interest. And their interest is actually gaming. And you might be wondering, why would you do that? Well, let's say this is my flow for the gamers on YouTube. I want to help gamers to improve their YouTube channel. And maybe I have a also a flow for vloggers about traveling. In that case, I would type here travel and I would know which one is which because I can later target them specifically. And this is really great. You're tagging this person with their interest and later on you can also send offers specifically for them. So maybe uh, I'm going to have a course only for gamers uh, and later on I can just target these people. 
So it's really useful to do that from the start. I'm gonna click on save. Once this flow is done, that's it. They are moved and now they become part of your main newsletter. So now we can actually go back and create your first email campaign. And so they're called campaigns here. So if you click on campaign, so in Mailer Lite, campaigns are same as like basic emails. You can schedule them, but that's pretty much it. There's no automation behind it. So let's create a campaign. And let's say this is an email about, uh, I don't know, five tips on how to be natural on camera. We're just gonna have a regular campaign. These are a bit more uh, advanced here. And if you want, you can try out this auto resend. So you give subscribers a second chance to open your newsletter. I think it just resends the same email again. Save and continue. Now let's add a subject line. And to subject line, we can actually add a nice emoji here, like camera. Yes. Just to spice it up. Again, who is it from? We have already set that up. Tracking options. Yep. UTM tags. Next. And again, you have the option to use tem templates or start from scratch and either use drag and drop editor where you can add uh, nice images and things like that or rich text editor. Again, for my needs, I usually use rich text editor, but if you have something that is very visual, just use the drag and drop editor. And this is again, the same uh, editor as we used before. And you can just start typing whatever you want here, your email. So your email goes here, whatever you set to do here. So just as a recap in here, you can add new sections by, by pressing enter. And then if you hover over this little plus icon, you can add more elements to it, like images and tables and stuff like that. And then you can adjust the global settings for the email here on the right. And when you click into, if you double click on any of this text, you can see that this toolbar appears and you can add more here and style the text or add links uh, from here. Otherwise it works pretty much the same as writing any other email. And then just when you're done with editing everything, you can click on done editing. Where this differs is in the settings. So let's take a look. So first of all, you need to select to whom you actually send it out. You can choose to all active subscribers, but actually the way we've set this up, we want to send it to the newsletter group. Now there's nobody there right now. So I'll, uh, I'll have to select the all active subscribers, but in other case, I would just select newsletter group, right? Then click on next. Now there's like a review that what you've done and this is a real thing. Next is the scheduling. And here it's pretty simple as usual. You have send now, once you obviously send out the email immediately. Then you have send later. So you can choose the date. For example, I can send it out on Tuesday at this time. And this is the local time, whatever time you've set mailer light. So for example, for me, it's the CET. That's when it's going to send it out. So here's the time zone. And you also have another cool option that comes with Mailer Lite is the deliver based on time zone. So this means if I set this to now, uh, let's say go on Tuesday at, let's go in the morning, let's say like at 10 in the morning. This means it, wherever it sends out the email only once that time zone has 10 a.m. That's really cool because then you can time it so that, for example, if you are a business to business company. You could send the emails before people arrive to work locally. So that's uh, based on their time zone, or you could send it out once they already got home because you're an entertainment newsletter. So then that makes more sense, I guess. So if I uh, keep it like this and then click on schedule, you'll notice now the email is in the outbox. So now at 10 AM uh, on Tuesday, it will send this out. Now, I don't want to do that. Also, there's not that many. There's only me who receives this email. So I can also cancel the sending here. Okay, next, let's set up quickly a pop-up. And that's quite simply in the form. So if you click on forms. And here you have option for pop-ups, embedded forms and promotions. Promotions are basically just uh, usually for e-commerce. They're pretty much same as pop-ups, but uh, have a bit different elements. And embedded forms are 
forms that are uh, on the page itself. So you'll put it on your website b between a line or maybe in your uh, on your home page somewhere and pop-ups, they, well, pop up whenever you tell them to pop up. So let's create a pop-up quickly. So you can give your pop-up a name. I'm just gonna call it default pop-up because it's gonna be on all pages, not really depending on, uh, on the page itself. And just make sure it's pop-up, save and continue. And then you can say, hey, if they use this pop-up and sign up, which group they're going to go to. So I'm actually, I wanted to go to the welcome sequence group. Now, obviously, this should be a generic welcome sequence and not specific because the pop-up will be everywhere. So I'm going to click on continue. And now you can choose a template. There's a lot of different options here. Uh, just choose one that you like so for example this one this look, looks quite nice yeah this looks like something i can use i'm going to select the template and now i can modify it the way i want it here's the template and let's just remove stuff we don't need so i don't want this part and just adjust it so that it looks a bit better so i'm gonna make it quite similar to what i had before change this text like this some subtext already prepared that i just add it there and maybe i can i don't know if i want i can highlight this one with make it bold like this and now i have email field and name here so let's save this so that i can actually change that let's edit this form i'm gonna just change the order here and save it and what's cool about the pop-up builder is you can choose what kind of pop-up it will be. So this is the traditional one. And you have this like a little ribbon at the bottom. You can close it with this little X. Then there's uh, the side thingy. This one is on the left side. You can also change it to be on the right side. And then you have this one that covers the whole page. So there's no way you can avoid this. And remember, with the free account, you will see this Mailer Lite uh, logo. So if you upgrade, that's going to disappear. And then you also have this side thingy. You can choose if it's on the left or right side. I think it kind of slides into the view. It looks a bit nicer than just a pop up. So I'm going to go with the traditional one. And if you need to change the image, you can uh, change it here. You can see here, you can just change it. Let's do that. I'm going to use the same one I used before. Don't need to zoom in. I just want to insert it. All right. I mean, it didn't work exactly how I wanted, but it's fine. All right. It's looking great. So let's say I'm happy with all of this now and I'm done with editing. Let's click on that. Now, this is where you actually set the behavioral pop up. So pop ups can be triggered with uh, three different ways. You can wait for a certain amount of seconds. I wouldn't do five seconds, that's way too fast. I would do something like 30 seconds or something uh, so that you don't distract the people immediately. Also, after five seconds, it just doesn't make sense. If somebody just came to your site, they're not gonna sign up for your newsletter. So you need to give them a bit of time before you show that pop-up. You can also trigger it when they scroll to a certain depth, but I find this a bit, yeah, not something I would use. Then you can also show before closing a page. So there's a little script that runs. So if somebody starts to go like towards the X here on top, it kind of triggers like, hey, they're probably going to close this browser. So let's just show that pop up. There's nothing to lose anymore, basically. But it doesn't work on mobile. So I just like to use the first option. So after a certain amount of time, it pops up. Now you can choose the frequency. Maybe once a month is too, too little. So let's say every week. Uh, if they see it and they close it, they will see it again in a week. Then you can schedule it that the pop-up only appears in the morning or in the evening. I would just keep it to none. And then obviously you have the visibility, so you can hide it on desktop or mobile or tablet devices. Also, you can hide it on specific pages. So maybe you have another pop-up on that specific page. You could hide it, uh, the default one for those. Or then you can also specify the specific pages where it does show up. For this one, it's default one, and I don't have any other one. I'm just keep it to always show. Then save changes. And this is where it gets a bit technical. You would need to copy this code into your 
head section of your website. In WordPress, it's quite easy. You could just install a plugin. It will kind of do it for you. And same thing for Shopify, there's plugins. You just need to ask your page builder or your uh, whatever you build your website on, uh, where can you place uh, scripts into the head tag? So between the head tags. And you just throw that in and it show, should show up on all pages for the pop-ups to work on all pages. But th this is all you need to do for pop-ups. And there you go. It's now running. You need to enable it here with the status. Uh, and it's uh, selected for double opt-in. I don't think you need that. Uh, just disable it for that. If you would place that JavaScript into your website, then they will, this would start working. And let me show you what it looks like on my website. This is the embedded form. I'm going to show you how to do that in just a second. It's a bit simpler, but basically does the same thing. And then if we wait for, I think, 30 seconds, then there'll be a pop up. So it looks like this. It just pops up and you have the same information as before. So that was the pop up. So let's create now embedded forms. So, so if you go to forms and embedded forms and create new one. And I'm just going to call this default form. And yeah, embedded form, save and continue. Again, you need to choose where your subscribers, which group they go to. Again, I'm going to choose the welcome sequence and continue. And by the way, you could create another sequence here if you want to. You're now back into the builder. So now you could add stuff here. So for example, we have only email here. I want to add name as well, add it there. You could uh, edit the text and everything as we spoke before. So I'm going to save what I've created here, although it's very simple. It's exactly the same builder and you have the subscribe form here and also the success message. So when somebody fills it in, they'll see this thank you message uh, in the form itself. And obviously you can modify this to your liking. So if you don't like it, that it's so small, maybe you want to add an image or whatever, you can also do it here. Now, once you're done with all the settings, you go and you need to place this on your website. So this is the default form. I'm going to again disable the double opt-in. But now if you scroll down here, so here's the JavaScript snippet. And let me just show you how to use this just quickly. So I'm here in WordPress in Elementor. And if I would like to add that embedded form here, it's quite simple. All I have to do is search for HTML and then I drag it here. Now, pretty much every page builder has this. So uh, probably if you're not using WordPress, the, your page builder also has a feature like this. It's usually called HTML code or HTML block or something like that. So now I have here a field. So if I go to MailerLite, I can grab Either if I've installed this JavaScript on the whole website, then I could just grab this part. If I haven't, I can go to HTML code and I can now copy all of this, all of this, and just go here and place it in here. You can see it appears immediately. So that's how powerful it is. And now I would save this. And if I would go to this page, there would be a form embedded form like this one just at the bottom of this page. I recommend using the HTML code only if you have a few pages where you're going to use these uh, forms. So no pop-ups, no nothing, just a couple of forms here and there. Otherwise, use the JavaScript uh, snippet in the head section and then you have that short HTML that you place wherever you want it. It's just more efficient that way. And lastly, let's take a look at the account settings and especially there's the subscribe settings and this is important if you want to use double opt-in so uh, in case when users sign up for your newsletter they actually get another email saying hey are you sure you want to sign up for this newsletter like it wasn't an accident so that's double double opt-in so there's this extra step to actually get on the list in some countries double opt-in is actually legal requirement like germany so you would need to enable that here and you can actually set the email that confirms the double opt-in here. So if you need to edit it, you just click here, edit. And your same thing for the confirmation email of the double opt-in. So if they actually did click, hey, yes, I want to opt-in for this newsletter, then you can also edit that thank you here. 
same thing goes for unsubscribe settings so sometimes some people will unsubscribe you can edit that page what they see here so if you want to edit the content you can edit here so uh, if they click on unsubscribe in your email they will land on this page and then basically there's one more question are you sure you want to unsubscribe and then uh, from they'll have an option to either yes or no and this is where you can also set that up next let's authenticate our domain name because it's super important for deliverability we want to make sure our emails hit the inboxes and not the spam so if you go to account settings and then you go to domains and here authenticate we will have to add these two records that they indicate here to our dns settings now you need to own a domain name to actually even get this done and you need to set it in your domain registrar but if your domain is already pointing to your web hosting then you have to go to your web hosting and add it there in your dns settings now i'll be using cloudflare to set this up but the dns settings part is uh, pretty much the same for any other web host if you have any issues then just reach out to the mailer light support they, they should be able to help you also so let's grab this one as the name. So in Cloudflare, you just need to go to DNS settings. So you click on this one and then here add record. In this case, we're gonna get first add a C name record, C name. And then we need to grab this part as the name. Let's copy it, add it like this. And then the target is uh, this thing in here. Let's copy it, add it there and then save. All right, and then the second part is to add another record, which will be TXT. Let's find it here at the bottom. And they again give the name as my domain name. And then the content will be this thing. So just copy the whole thing like this, and then save it. And I just noticed that I forgot for the C name, in Cloudflare, I actually have to disable the proxy. Otherwise, this will work. For other hosts, it might not need this. So it really depends a bit on your on your domain registrar as well. So save it. All right. Now, if you go back to MailerLite and click on Check DNS Records, you can see it already recognized the SPF sender. Now I just waited for a few more minutes and then tried again. And now it looks like it's all successful. Now this might take a few hours actually to propagate. So maybe come next day and see if it worked. If it didn't, then just reach out to MailerLite support. They will be able to help you with this. Great job with learning how to use MailerLite. Now, when starting out, email marketing can be a bit intimidating. That's why I've created this video right here where I'll give you my top email marketing tips for beginners. With these tips, I'm able to get 500 email subscribers every month.